in this tutoral we'll be creating this um, Apple inspired uh, digital watch quite quickly and after we've built that model we'll be adding on this kind of sci-fi dot matrix kind of floating screen like a hologram I guess and that's actually being driven by a video to affect uh, some MoGraph objects you can put any sort of animation in there not necessarily the text that I've done in this video so please remember to like and subscribe um, tap the notification bell below to get updates on when I release new videos uh, and with that let's just get started so to start off with you'll notice I'm using um, R22 version of Cinema 4D and nothing we do in this is R22 specific we can probably use R20 and above because we're going to use a bit of the volume builder but for the main hologrammy sort of uh, LCD uh, animation that uh, you could probably do in almost any version of Cinema so let's start off with a quickly the, the watch build because this is pretty quick and it's kind of based on an Apple watch I guess but I, I just kind of tried to make it reasonably generic um, so this is quite a quick build to do so just make this 200 by 55 by 220 this will be the, the watch face we'll add on a fillet of uh, maybe like 25 and up subdivisions to maybe 10 so that's kind of the main part of the watch face and if I uh, copy and paste that let's just call this one main and then we'll have uh, like a divide down the middle where the kind of uh, watch straps are going to connect to we'll make this like 150 by 30 by 300 this is going to take a slice out the middle and you could probably use the ball tool actually if you didn't want to use the volume builder you could use the ball to do the same thing uh, we'll call this uh, right, cut out then I'm going to get another cube just bring this in <clears throat> and this is because we're going to have the watch in two slices so just make this a bit wider and then we'll bring it down and to make sure it's um, definitely halfway up because this is set to zero and we know this box is 200 high we can just say minus 100 this is how we can like take that slice out so if we get a um, volume uh, builder and measure and let's uh, put that in there and then let's put all these in and then we can uh, we'll call this one half actually so we can keep track so we want to subtract that and then that cut out we also want to subtract so that leaves us with this kind of shape I'll probably take the voxel size down to like maybe two and then we'll put on a smoothing the smoothing options here have changed slightly but um, it's just in the naming this is like a normal smooth like it was before to set this to one maybe I'll take the strength down to like 75 about it so that's kind of our top half of the watch so we'll call this uh, watch top and uh, we'll put the dial on the side actually so let's get a cylinder for that go through plus X and we'll make this uh, 23 by 25 then for the height segments we'll leave that and the rotation maybe we'll make that like 32 and then for the caps we'll add a fillet on and we'll say 30 in the height just to kind of smooth it out and 9 in the radius let's have a look at that yep and then we can just kind of inset that so I just want it to kind of be insetting and we're going to duplicate this because we're going to um, use it to cut out and then for the actual dial itself so Let's call this dial, copy and paste, bring that in, under the smooth, subtract. So it's kind of leaving that little kind of gap for the dial to go in. Let's just hide that a second. Then we can copy everything and call this one watch base. And all we need to do here is take our half and rather than minus 100, we want to be in 100. And that gives us our bottom half of the watch and what I might do actually is this smoothing I might actually change the voxel size down to one just so it kind of really tightens everything up nice and then we'll copy that watch top again and this one we'll call um, like strap connections and for this one we can get rid of the dial, we can get rid of the half we just want that cut out and main and we're going to say intersect that gives us 
that kind of uh, intersection there. That's where, and then we'll connect that strap to it. So to do that, we can grab a rectangle. Let's change the plane. And then I want to make this 112 by 260. We get that wide kind of like bar that's going to stick out. And then uh, let's put some rounding on that. And we'll probably change that to something like, well, like 10, maybe a bit more than that, 15. And then we can take that into here and we don't need to kind of run it for a sweep or anything because uh, the volume builder actually adds volume to it. So let's put that underneath. And if we select it, now this might have changed. Oh, here we go. So we've got density and radius. So we could change our radius to something like uh, 14. Wow, that's too big. We want half of that. 7.5, that'll do. Yeah, so that's kind of our like strap connections. And then the uh, density, I think we can probably leave that at one. So now we can actually add that dial back in. And then we'll just add some like, additional parts onto this. So let's get a uh, MoGraph, just a uh, boner. See, everything, so everything's slightly different. I think you can still get things up here. Let's bring in a uh, capsule, add that into the cloner. We want to be on a radial. Let's change the radial type. Yep. Yeah. Rotate that through 90. And then let's just put it under the dial. Actually, we'll PSR it. PSR has moved up to here actually automatically. So let's PSR it. Rotate that by 90. I need to add in my my custom palettes again so that's something i'll need to do on here i think you can save them out of an old version of cinema and bring them into the new one three by 13 then we'll change the radius to like 22 we'll up this count to like 16 so that's giving us those marks and then what we could actually do is maybe i might like to move these out a bit maybe it's a bit too recessed so what I'd have to do is just grab these dials, the, the cutouts, plus these and move everything together. I'll just bring it out a little more like that. So it's just kind of sticking in. And then uh, for this dial, we'll uh, get another volume builder, mesher. Um, I'm gonna actually put them PSR them underneath the dial then we'll throw all these bits in we'll take this down to one add on a smoothing that one bring this down when well, it's smoothed but not a ton like that and I might just grab another cylinder take off that fillet bring the size down scale it out I just want to kind of have like a middle part to it just to make the dial look a bit more interesting so let's bring that in and subtract that and then we can duplicate that actually add a fillet back on again but maybe we'll make it very small like three maybe like two to scale that in and then group those bits together and that is our dial there you go, so that is the main build of the watch. Maybe I'll tone down those uh, edges. Maybe I'll make this like 21. We split the difference, say 21.5. And then have a look at that smoothing, maybe. I just want kind of like enough detail on there so it just kind of helps with some reflections of things so that's that done so the next thing is the watch strap so let's just save this i'll call it watch tutorial so to create the strap let's uh, just get a spline so i'm just going to zoom out a little bit and get the pen tool i'm going to start over here and just um, use the bezier handles just to kind of just going to roughly look at this bring it over here maybe We'll bend in there and we'll come back around to here add that there and what I might actually do is extend this a little 
And then to extend this one, I'll probably just add in an additional point. Just drag this one along. Oh, and then this one, you see it's um, got opposite kind of sizes on here. So let's go to tools. Oh, it'll be under spline now. I think before it would have been under tools and then spline, but now it's under spline. And um, we can say equal tangent length. And then let's just bring this over. And uh, I'm not kind of dealing with the ends of the straps. They're going to be off screen. We get this point here, and we'll just have a play around. And we can just kind of make this look maybe something like that. We can have a play with these. It's just kind of getting a shape. We just want that to make sure we've got that teardrop shape at the end. I'm going to take this angle down to zero so it gives us a smoother shape. And maybe I might extend this a little. And this one. There we go. Um, rather than sweeping something, I'm going to get a cube. I'm going to make this 90 by 5 by 400. So that's going to be our strap, and we're going to stretch this. Uh, I'll make it like 200 segments. We'll call this strap. Is it Shift C? Brings up this command, and then I can um, look for. Oh, it would have been under there actually. There it is, spine wrap. I'm going to add this on. Oh. Underneath there, and our spline is this spline. It never works right away. So let's um, rotate. Let's grab that and rotate that. By 90. And then it looks like we're going to have to rotate by 90 again. Maybe like that. Call that 90. See, and that is our kind of strap. Now what I might do is just go onto here and just add a fillet on. Okay, so uh, here we go. So I'm going to group all these objects. I'll call this strap. So I'm just going to copy it and spin it round. Okay. So there that is. So let's bring in a camera. I'm like going to go into this tele mode. So zoom in quite close and then kind of get an angle that I like. Maybe we'll do something like that. Save. And then I'm going to add in a plane. This will be the floor. Let's make this like a thousand by a thousand. And drop that down. Maybe like there. So it's kind of like floating above this floor. So for our display, I'm going to bring in another rectangle and then I'm going to change this size to 250 by 70 and then turn on rounding and I'm going to leave that at 35. So it's going to kind of wrap around here um, and we're going to do that by bringing in a plane and our plane is going to act as our basis for the screen and what we're going to do is create a MoGraph and apply all of the little dots to this uh, plane. So let's change this width to something like 800 by 160 and segments I'm going to make them quite high. I'm going to say 400 by 80 and then we're going to bring in our spline wrap uh, and then apply that to the plane and then our spline is the rectangle. We'll call this uh, display rectangle. We'll call this display. Um, obviously, the rotation needs to be changed. So let's rotate that from 90. So this is going to be the basis for the display. So if I go to uh, garage shading with lines, you see we've got all of these uh, cubes on here, all of these polygons. So each of these polygons, we want to display a um, like a, a point. 
and our point is going to be um, a sphere on a cloner. So let's uh, grab a cloner and a sphere. Now this sphere doesn't need to be super detailed. We'll just take this down to like eight maybe. Uh, the radius, we're going to make that really low. So I'm going to say 0 0.1. We go to my cloner. And I'll call this one display as well. Um, we go to here. Um, the clones, I want to say uh, render instance because we can have quite a few of them. And uh, rather than grid array, we want to say object. And the object is the display. And we need to put the sphere in the mo graph. So we wait a second, we should see. Let's hide our display. Oh, and probably currently, they're probably currently randomly on the surface. So if I just take up the size, so let's just change it to two. You see they're randomly aligned. I go back down to that original size of 0.1. We're going to garage shading. Uh, we want to change the dis distribution here from surface to polygon center. So if we do that, we wait a second because there's lots to be produced. See, now we've got all of these hundreds of little dots. And uh, what we're going to do is actually make those shine. And we're going to decide how to display them uh, through a shader. So let's uh, do that. Let's group these together. So we've got all these items in one place. And we'll just call this display. And then we need to create you know that what is going to be displayed on here so the way it's going to be displayed is through like a black and white image so here i am in after effects i've got um a video i've seen i've got this one called time check and all i'm doing is just um you know animating this these two words from left to right basically so it creates a loop i've just created it so it's four seconds so it's 100 frames 25 frames per second so i know it's going to match up with my um, main animation i've also grabbed this which was some animations from motion array just to show you how you might use you know you could put any animation in here it doesn't necessarily need to be the words like i've done here but let's just say we've got the words i'm going to add those to the render queue and i'm going to export this rather than as a quick time as a jpeg sequence and then I'm going to put it in here in my text folder for uh, for this project. And let's render. That's pretty quick. So uh, we can go to the display. Now we can go to uh, up here. The, I think the effectors are now in here available to us. And get a shader. Let's put this in here to keep it all together. So we go in here. And uh, in my text folder for this uh, project, just selected the first image in our sequence that we just rendered out. So that's zero, all, all the zeros. And this one goes up to 100. So you just need to make sure that you keep an eye on the number of frames that you're exporting. Uh, so if I open that, uh, and then we can go into the image. And you see we've got this tab here, animation. So this is where we can actually set how this animates. So we can say, actually, let's uh, go up here and just change the size of our objects that are on here, just so it makes it easier to see. Let's go up to one. You can see there what's happening. We can see it, even though we're not kind of glowing and doing all that at the moment. Uh, so on our shader, let's go back. So we want movie start frame to be zero, movie end frame, we want that to be 100. So that should, if we animate, you see our video is now playing so obviously i've got some text on here and you could do you could use other tools to make your text animate along but just wanted to show that you could put any video you wanted into here you know um that you wanted to have that kind of lcd kind of dot matrixy look so on the shader let's go to the parameters and the scale we want to set the scale actually to minus one oh no We could just invert this. Probably should have rendered it out white, black on white, but you can quite easily switch that. And then obviously it's kind of upside down and facing the wrong way. So we need to switch, switch that around. We can do that probably 
one by let's rotate the rectangle and let's press play okay yeah so that's working um, it's not kind of starting where I want it to start so to change the start point I'm going to go onto the spline wrap and then change this offset maybe I say okay I want it to start so that you know time is the first is the first word up so that's kind of all of that set up so but these are going to be far too big if we had lights on these it's going to completely blow out so let's go back to the sphere itself we're going to change this radius to something very small we're going to change this to like 0.1 so it's quite tiny you can just about see it but when we add our materials on in octane that's going to really shine so that's what we'll do next okay so i've just opened up an octane window and um, i've just made sure i'm on path tracing and i've just set my samples to 500 for the moment so let's um let's bring in some materials so i think the first thing we'll do is we want a hdri environment and I'm going to grab an image texture in my text folder. I've got this uh, Canada Montreal Loft Max Sunny EXR. Um, so this, um, I'll put a link down below where you can get this. So that gives us kind of a nice overall kind of uh, look. Uh, and then we're going to use some very simple materials. So let's um, grab a Octane Glossy and we'll call this um, Shiny. And I'm going to, on the diffuse, just make this black and this is going to be kind of the front face of the watch so that's our watch top and then in the dial I might make it that kind of center part of the dial and then I'm going to duplicate that and call this rough and this one I'm going to add a roughness of like 0.2 maybe even more like 0.34 and I'm going to make this kind of the base and what else the rest of that dial and then the shininess here for maybe I'll get like a, a metal so let's get a metallic I'm going to add that to the those strap connectors I don't want them to be bright silver so go in and we'll call this connectors and then to bring down the brightness, I think we need to bring down the specular. See, so we get kind of a darker. I'm going to bring it right down so it kind of looks metallic, but it looks kind of very dark. Nice, so it kind of fits in. Um, so that one's pretty simple. So then we've got the strap. So let's maybe duplicate that shiny one and let's call this strap. And for this, I'm going to put a bump map on. So let's get a uh, image texture. Uh, there it is. And for this, I've just got these lines, which I just created in Photoshop. It's just black and white lines, basically. And then I've blurred it so there, there's a little bit of fade between them. And this will just give us kind of like some strap detail. So I'm going to add that onto the cube. And let's just go to uh, one in size so we can see what that looks like. So it's obviously currently the wrong way. Um, so what I want to do is rather than UV mapping, I'm going to make this cubic. And then I'm going to rotate it. So let's go to UV mode. Just rotate this by 90 degrees. Like that. It just gives us those lines on there and then I might actually re reduce that by 50% so it just gives us some detail and then I'm going to actually add some roughness on there but for the minute I'll just maybe make this point too and maybe I'll add some more later on down the line and I can just duplicate that material on the other side now you see how it's kind of getting cut off like that um, and kind of didn't see it on this side is because obviously it's cubic but this strap is being bent so let's um let's turn off spline wrap and then I'm going to select uh, fit to object 
I'll say no. And then under tags, actually I'm not going to do cubic, I'm going to do a uh, flat. Rotate that. So that's 90 and we want this to fit to object. No. Yeah, so that's just basically flat down on top. You can see, see it there. And then I'm going to add a tag. Uh, oh, we want stick texture. So there we go. Oh no, would this be? It used to be stick texture, but they renamed it pin material. I guess they have. Let's just call that record. So normally that's called stick texture. I'm just going to say record. Then when I turn this back on again, we need to scale this down. So let's make this 50 again. Make it smaller just so we can see if that has stuck it. Yeah, see now it's actually, it's on there correctly. I think that's correct. And let's just um, grab both of those and we'll drag them onto the other side of the strap. Yeah, so just got enough bump there. I might just scale this down. You could do this in the octane texture as well, but um, we can quite easily just do it here. Maybe like that, like 12. Yeah, that's cool. So that is uh, the main part of that. So uh, I'm just going to position this up a little bit more central. And then I want to add in a floor. So I'm going to get another black material. So we're going to get a glossy I'll call this floor and we'll drag that on and for this one we'll get the diffuse we'll take down to black and see it's like super shiny at the moment so go to roughness add image texture and then we'll grab this um, asphalt texture which again I'll put a link to down below where you can get this from and we're not having much effect because it's we need a bit more of a gradient in there so let's um a bit more contrast between the lights and darks so let's add that in let's uh, solo that and then let's just kind of crunch this up you can also change it by changing the gamma. Maybe something like that. See what it looks like. Completely disappeared. But we actually need to put some lights in. I think that's going to help us. Let's just tweak this. I think we're going to need to put in a light above. To actually be able to see where it's rough and where it's not. So, um... Let's do that first and then we can sort out that floor. So let's bring in a light, bring in an octane area light. And then I want to kind of position this over here. I want to like kind of see you get this kind of reflection on the edge. So let's uh, move this around. And actually what I might do is bring in a targeted area light. So it's going to target to that central position. So then I kind of don't need to get it put, you know, get all my angles perfectly right because I can move it. I can always delete the tag and then um, reapply and make this stretch this out. Oh, it's longer. Position this over here. I see we're starting to see get the pick up some roughness and stuff now. It's obviously too bright on the watch. So bring this down. I see I kind of like where it's kind of picking up here. We can see and with or without we're getting a bit of that brightness. I'm gonna make that longer. And what I might do actually is if we go onto the light and texture, and then if we go to plugins, go to octane. Let's bring on a fall off map and see that's kind of just disappeared, but um, we can change the mode and the values. 
let's um, go on this versus I. We we can change the amount of fall off that we get, so we can kind of see, you know, we can dial in how the light affects it. I've made that far too long. Wow. Let's bring this in again. And we can also change the light power. I just don't want that really bright piece in the corner. Okay, so that's that. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to bring one over to the other side. Maybe up here. There's, we've got this light on the edge. Let's bring it down. Something like that. And then I might change the color of this. So the temperature, the higher you go, the bluer it gets. The lower, the redder it gets. So... Maybe I'll go in more the blue mode and then make the other side kind of a warmer. So we've kind of got the contrast between the two. And I might take that floor down a little bit. So I've got a bit more of a divide between the floor and the watch. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I'll, tweak, I'll tweak my angle slightly. Actually, we're going to get some light coming off the watch. So... We could do that next. So let's um, create our uh, on a diffuse material. And this is going to be our lights. We go to emission. We're going to get a black body emission. Let's just drag that onto our display. Not that, but the. There we go. See, it's quite intense. And uh, let's change this to surface brightness and maybe we'll take this up to like 200 and then let's go to our camera let's add on a octane tag go to post processing and let's up the bloom power then cut off What I might do actually is that back to 100. I'm going to turn off that to see how uh, power difference. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting it. So we're getting that kind of glow now. And you can play with this post processing to kind of brighten that up. And then you see if we had this down to zero, you know, it would make everything glow. So we want to cut off. So we want just the brightest things to glow. In our scene, that's that LCD panel. So I want to change the color. So I'm going to go texture, plug in octane, and we're going to go RGB spectrum. That seems to really boost the power. That might be why I eventually actually changed the surface brightness. So we've got a bit more control. And then I'm going to change the color of this. Maybe we'll go like a purple up the power yeah so then now we've got our um our glowing light and now we can see where it's um the roughness is coming in and out and you could apply a different type of texture it doesn't necessarily need to be this one i'm just giving you this as an option and something i found that you guys can use for free um so that's that on there and then i had some kind of patterns on here and i, I did it on a couple of other uh, watches so um the way I did that was just taking this display setup that we've already got and duplicating it. So let's just do copy. And for the shader, let's clear for a second. And for the display, rather than um, one large one that kind of covers everything i can just take the size of this down so maybe we'll make it a height of like 20. and let's move this down in position so let me just go back to our main modeling tool again oh we need to move the the spline that's why so let's just say that we, we want some kind of random pattern above and below. And uh, because 
I want two of them. Let's um, oh, we'll do one and then and then we can just duplicate it. So for this shader, let's hide that. Uh, and we can just bring in a noise, and then do an animated noise rather than rather than bringing in a video. This is another way of doing it. So we could up the scale, we could up the contrast. We we'll get more of a divide between black and white. Obviously, play with our bloom. It's far too bright. So we can kind of tweak up our uh, power levels. And let's change this to one of these Voronoi ones that are kind of patterned. We'll add a couple of cycles to give it some detail. So you see, we can bring that in. I think I may end up making some sort of lots of little random lines. I think I did that by increasing the scale in one direction. Probably not that one. Maybe we'll make that one low. There we go. So you see we get some some lines going on there. Maybe you could scale it like that as well. You can change the animation speed and the loop period is four for this because it's four seconds long. Um, and because we've got a separate set of lights, we could duplicate this and change the color of these. Let's go more of a turquoisey blue. Add that on. And then we could probably change the actual settings. Maybe bring the brightness of this right down. Something like that. Maybe we'll change it so that that time one is uh, more of the blues than the purples. Something like that. And you know, you can have a, this is where you can have a play basically, but um, we can have a quick play through. And you see now we've got our animated, uh, animated text and we've also got this random animation on here. I could, what I would probably do is actually up the scale of this to something even bigger. Maybe like... 2000, maybe I'll even increase this. Then tr maybe even try type of noise. Maybe we could take down the bright, uh, up the brightness so we can kind of have a reduced number of lines. And make this kind of more similar. And then I want to just like kind of tweak these settings. Okay. So, um, yeah, then we can get this pattern from the bottom and we'll put that at the top as well. Be something like that and then you can also what we could do is actually to make their less detail in these because these two in the um, display um, we've still got the same amount of width and height segments so we could just take this down to reduce the number of, um, of dots that we've got so maybe we take this down to like 200 by 20 and you see there we're getting a, redu a big reduced amount Maybe just down to 10. There we go. And then we can play around with those bloom settings. And draw cut off slightly. And there's our kind of like floating digital display. Let's just change that bloom power. Yeah. So there it is. So uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful. Um, we kind of had a bit of a play and it was a bit of a different kind of tutorial because I was kind of getting used to Cinema 4D 22 while I was um, going through it. Um, but uh, I'll get used to it and uh, it, you know, we'll be a bit more smooth in the next tutorial. So uh, yeah, 
that's when I would now render this out and um, I might put a vibrate tag on the whole thing maybe make it like wobble about a bit but yeah that's it so I'll see you in the next tutorial cheers bye